So the Pioneer overheated a few times at River Ranch, so I wanted to really clean the radiator out and fix that problem because I really just like to be able to ride hard and not worry about stuff like that. Um, and sure enough, the radiator was totally caked. That was the whole issue. So pulled it out of the machine to clean it properly. There's just too many spots on the rear of the radiator. You can't clean well from the front. Um, so it's good to go now, and this is a good tutorial on how to remove the radiator um, and change the coolant and burp the coolant system, which is actually kind of a pain. But if you're looking for that, skip to the end of the video. That's where you bleed the coolant system. So what it looks like after River Ranch. So there's still some water in here from going to the pond just now, but it doesn't look totally caked, right? It's wet, but you can see the veins and everything. So it's pretty clean, but it was overheating. So let's find out why. Um, so in order to pull this radiator, you really got to pull this whole top red piece, which is this whole piece. You got to loosen up, remove your battery, take all your electronics, free them from the fender, remove your snorkel if you have this kind of snorkel, remove your winch solenoid, um, just undo it so you can tuck those wires through there. And uh, then we got to pull this whole top piece out. I haven't done that yet, so I'll show you how I do it once I figure it out. Um, one thing to note, there's a little access panel right here underneath your battery, that little black cover. And that lets you get down here to adjust your throttle cable and a couple other things if you need to do that. That's nice. Honda's always thinking about convenient ways to access stuff. Uh, but now I'm going to start pulling plastic clips. So you got a ton of them all over the place. And we'll see what it takes to get this guy off. I suspect I'll probably have to pull these again, which is annoying because I just had those off. I really should have done this when I had them off. Um, but I thought I could clean it well enough, and apparently I couldn't. Uh, it's worth noting that this thing was fine about overheating until I had it completely submerged in really goopy mud for a long period of time back and forth, you know, just pumping mud into there. Um, never had any problems until that happened. And then since then, if I run it real hard in sugar sand, it does get hot. So we're going to pull the radiator, um, put some fresh coolant in it and fix this overheating problem once and for all until I get in another bounty hole and do it again. Um, but it is what it is. No, I'm not going to relocate the radiator. I like not feeling the, the heat off of it. Uh, if you put it in the rear, you got the noise of the fan by your head. You got the heat of it radiating off onto you. It's called a radiator for a reason. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to do all that. All right, there's the whole monstrosity of a hood off. Um, as, as with most things on a Honda, it was easier than you would expect. Um, so I pulled these clips here and these clips down here just to get a little more room to flex this, but left the rest of that on. And then there was two 10 millimeter bolts down here to pull. Um, I could have left this bar in place, but I unbolted it. But all you really had to do was unbolt the ends of it. The headlights come off with it and the wiring for the headlights also comes off together. So I'll use this as an opportunity to upgrade my other headlight because I had a projector beam style on one side and the old school on the other, the stock one. So here's the radiator. It's out in the open now, very easy to get to. Um, and you can see that the way the shield is shaped you can get to most of the stuff to clean from the front, but from the back, it's kind of covered up with the fan and stuff. So now we got to pull the rest of the way out. Um, obviously pulling the bumper would help here. I'm trying to see if I can do it without pulling the bumper, but um, yeah. So I got to get to some 10 millimeter bolts that are down in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the bumper because it's really quick. Um, and then pull this shroud off with those two tens, these two clips, and then pull a couple more tens to get the uh, radiator separated from the fan shroud. And I'll leave the fan shroud in the frame. Um, then we'll drain the coolant and get the radiator off and flush it really good. This radiator isn't massive. Um, I think the Talon's got a bigger one. It does have an upgraded radiator from 2021 with some improved ducting, but it's still not as much cooling as you get on a Talon. Uh, there's my snorkel pipe. There's this tray, you can see that it's missing some plastic clips for when I had the lift kit on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those back in while I've got all apart like this. And all the cables that were sitting down inside the fender, I just kind of flipped them up on the dash and put some bungee cords to hold them out of the way. Here's my breathers, there's my radiator overflow, and there's oh, this radiator overflow. And this is front diff and fan breather. And the fan does seem to be working well still. Um, I think the problem is just the fact that the radiator isn't 100 percent clean so all right radiator is removed pretty easy and as expected it looks like complete shit from the back it's at least 50 percent clogged you can see you really can't clean these things effectively in the machine um and if people say oh you stove cleaner or whatever this is the only correct way to clean your radiator pull it off the machine 
soak it, flip it over, soak it, repeat, then degrease it. Yeah, it might look clean from the front, but never trust it until you see it from the back. Totally different story um, once you remove the radiator. So I'm gonna start flushing that. And while I'm in here, everything else looks pretty good. Um, fans working good, all the hosing, my snorkel job, everything looks legit. So not really anything else to do while I've got the whole front end apart. It does look kind of crazy. I always love how side-by-sides look without the plastic. There really isn't much to these things, man. I tell you what. Look at all the filth coming out of here. Oh, doggy. Pretty nasty. Yeah, that'll make you overheat. I've had people want me to rebuild their motors. Put a new head on them because they're overheating. 99% of the time, if you ride mud and your machine's overheating, it's because the back of your radiator looks like this. All right, so once you get all that done, you gotta fill the Pioneer 1000 with coolant, which is admittedly a bit of a faff. So I filled it up as much as I could, and I've got a little bit more sitting in the funnel. Um, it's about here to have some more pressure. Um, and then you gotta get to the bleeder. To get to the bleed valve, you gotta open up the bed, take off the five bolts to hold the seat back on, remove that, remove the seat bottom, and then remove this cover that goes all along here. It's a bunch of plastic clips going this way, and there's a couple, one here and one here, coming this way. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. Also, don't forget about these over here. And then you can yank that sucker out, and now you can get to the bleed bolt on top of the thermostat housing right here. Now, let's go ahead and see how much air is actually trapped in the system and see if you really have to do all this. I did totally drain the coolant. I do hear some hissing. So yeah, there was a little bit of air. All right, now it's bled, but there wasn't that much air. So you probably could have got away with just doing the old move I do, which is not do any of this fill it up completely, drive it up the hill to put the radiator up higher and then um, burp the coolant that way. Cause this was a whole lot of work just to get to that little screw. Cause it's kind of buried under the seats and the covers. But while I'm in here, check all your clamps on your snorkel pipes, give everything a good look over. And of course, when you got all these covers off, you might as well clean everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. But that's pretty much all you gotta do to get this thing to stop overheating is pull the radiator, clean it real good, and yeah. Next time I do this, I'm just gonna put a new radiator um, because this radiator is a pain in the butt to clean and I rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it. That's what all this dirt's from. And it's clean now, but it's still got some corrosion and stuff. So if you're gonna do all the work to pull it out, just throw a new one in there. That's my opinion, they're not that expensive. Um, but yeah, I really need to stay away from those, those holes where there's mud up to here. The water's okay, but all the little sticks and pieces of grass get in the radiator and they're really hard to get out because each of those blades is kind of serrated. It's a mess. 